Hello and welcome to your News and Features electronic magazine that centers on the different facets of motoring. Now on its third and fourth year, this is Motoring Today. My name is Susie Gamboa and here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the DOTR's achievement on its Libring Sakai program. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smarts portion centers on the first to stop, first to go rule. This week's Spying Trip Air shall be about the no-smoking policy in PUVs. The public service segment centers on carryover issues and problems from the past year. Showcase this week shall have the mid-size SUV from Isuzu, the MUX RZ4E LS Automatic. All these, plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. The DOTR is moving to implement an automated fare collection system in all public transport modes. The DOTR is drafting what it calls the Automated Fare Collection System National Standards, or AFCSNS. The FCSNS will set specifications for interoperable modes of automated payment collection and various transport modes nationwide. Among the modes of automated fare collections being studied is the use of bank EMV code debit and or credit cards with smart chips along with readers that will accept and validate the payment of fare. The DOTR said that this is similar to fare collection systems using EMV code debit, credit and prepaid cards now implemented in countries such as Bangkok, and Singapore. The DOTR has partnered with the Land Bank of the Philippines to conduct pilot production tests and proof of technology demonstration of readers that accept processing of EMV code contactless payments on modern PUJs, buses, and railways. The DOTR said the AFCSNS will pave the way for the use of a more secure payment system, improve passenger convenience, and help lessen card issue and management costs for transit operators. Automated fare collection would make for very convenient commuting, but many are hoping that the DOTR rolls this out with as few bugs as possible and with the least added cost to commuters. <music> Meanwhile, aside from now being able to run at maximum speed of 60 km per hour, the MRT3 now deploys 22 train sets on a daily basis. The management of the MRT3 has reported deploying 22 train sets daily starting January 2. With the trains now capable of running safely at a maximum speed of 60 km per hour and the deployment of 22 train sets on the main line daily, headway or the waiting time between trains at stations has been shorted to 3.5 to 4 minutes. Travel time from the North Avenue to the Taft Avenue station has also been cut to just 45 to 50 minutes. This has allowed the MRT3 to now average at least 113,358 passengers daily, the MRT3 reported. The MRT3 attributed the increase in speeds and the deployment of more train sets to the rehabilitation of trains and stations being conducted by maintenance provider Sumitomo Mitsubishi Heavy Industries of Japan. It added that of the 22 train sets deployed, two are Dalian trains refitted and re-equipped 
to be compatible with the MRT3 train system. Following the deployment of more trains at the start of the new year, the MRT3 management promised to further improve comfort, safety, and efficiency of the Metro's oldest running commuter train. Now that the MRT3 is running safely, smoothly, and efficiently again, thanks to maintenance provider Sumitomo Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, many hope that this will continue. Continuing, Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade invited Japan's ambassador to the Philippines to see and experience for himself improvements in the MRT3 that Japan helped fund. It was a who's who of the DOTR and the Japanese Embassy in Manila who took a ride on the MRT3 recently. The DOTR delegation was led by Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade, while the Japanese delegation was led by Ambassador Kazuhiko Koshikawa. Other dignitaries that boarded an MRT3 train at the North Station were First Secretary, Transport Economic Affairs of the Embassy of Japan, Sadaharu Hori, Japan International Cooperation Agency, or JICA, Senior Representative Kiyo Kawabuchi, and officials of the MRT3 maintenance contractor Sumitomo MHI, TESP. The main objective of the train ride was to showcase to the Japanese ambassador and JICA officials the improvements to the stations and train operations following rehabilitation works undertaken by Sumitomo Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, funded and technically supported by Japan. The entourage also inspected the MRT3 depot as well as the rolling stock sections where the overhauling of trains take place. During the inspection, Secretary Tugada praised the works being conducted by Sumitomo Mitsubishi Heavy Industries that has led to a more efficient, safe, and reliable MRT3 operations. Following the inspection of the MRT3 facilities, the group also headed to the Light Rail Transit Line 2 East Extension Station in Marikina for a briefing on the status of the project and a walkthrough of the concourse. The DOTR is pushing for the completion of the LRT2 Marikina and Antipolo stations April of this year. Once operational, the LRT2 East Extension can accommodate an additional 80,000 passengers daily, boosting the LRT2's current daily ridership of 240,000 passengers. The DOTR, under Secretary Tugade, deserves commendation for its steadfast efforts to fast-track the improvement of light rail transit systems in the country, as well as promoting the establishment of more railways, including a subway in Metro Manila. And finally, Imagine Law, a public interest law organization, is helping the LTO prepare for the implementation of Republic Act 11229, the Child Safety and Motor Vehicles Act. Imagine Law has donated 54 child restraint system sets to the LTO as part of initiatives to help the LTO prepare for the implementation of Republic Act 11229, the Child Safety and Motor Vehicles Act. RA11229 will, among others, require children 12 years and below to be secured in child restraint systems or CRS when riding in motor vehicles. The LTO said that regional offices will each get a CRS set to be used in training personnel on the installation, use, maintenance on installation of child restraint equipment. Each CSR set consists of rear-facing CRS, a forward-facing CRS, and a booster seat. Natasha Daphne Marcelo, Imagine Law Project Manager for Road Safety, said, Data shows that the use of CRS in motor vehicles can reduce the number of road crash-related deaths and injuries of child passengers. The LTO has begun conducting workshops to identify and align activities to enforce the Child Safety in Motor Vehicles Act. Reports of the Imagine Law donation to the LTO should help raise awareness about the impending implementation of Republic Act 11229 and the importance of investing in child restraint systems to protect children from motor vehicle accidents. Those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum, brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. This must be a world record. The DOTR's Libring Sakai program for medical frontliners has ferried over 2 million health workers to and from their workplaces since the community quarantine protocols or lockdowns were enforced in Metro Manila and other regions. Motoring Forum takes a look at this truly outstanding achievement. 
began shortly after the government placed Metro Manila and the adjacent provinces under community and then enhanced community quarantine ordering everybody except those in strictly defined essential services to remain at home as part of efforts to stop the spread of the coronavirus. All forms of public transportation were suspended. The enhanced community quarantine was supposed to last around two weeks or so. But even for that supposed short period, it became apparent that medical frontliners, the nurses and other health practitioners, and the indispensable staff at hospitals, clinics and medical centers need help in going to and from work and home. The DOTR, working with its line agencies and in coordination with other government departments and offices, scrambled to put together what it later named the Libring Sakai or Free Ride Service for Health Workers Project. In Metro Manila, the Libring Sakai for Frontliners program started with just three routes that passed through several hospitals and medical centers with loading and drop-off points soon being aired in traditional and social media and spread by word of mouth. As the community quarantine period was extended and extended anew, and weeks turned into months, the TOTR expanded the program with more routes and more buses participating. And the Libring Sakai program was soon replicated in other areas and regions outside of Metro Manila, where the COVID-19 contagion spread. The Libring Sakai program continues to this day, even as the authorities began easing restrictions and allowed more sectors of the economy to reopen. Today, the Libring Sakai for Frontliners program now operates 20 routes in the National Capital Region, Greater Manila Area. And to date, the DOTR reports that the Libring Sakai program has recorded ferrying over 2 million frontliners since it began operating back in March. 554,625 in the Greater Manila Area and over 1,446,836 outside of the National Capital Region. The continuing success of this program would not have been possible without the help of bus companies and other private transport companies and cooperatives. Included in this honors list are HM Transport, Jasper Jean, Saras Transport and Gold Star, Filtranco, RRCG Transport, Jack Liner and Dagupan Bus. Other transport companies and groups that participated in the Libre Sakai program in various ways include the following. San Agustin, Metro Express, Precious Grace Transport, St. Rose Transit, Hafti Transport, G-Liner, Man Rose, Pilipinas Auto Group, Beep, Mitsubishi Motors, Elmer Francisco Industries, Isuzu Philippines, Photon Motors, Suzuki, Meralco Isakai, Lucena Lines, Pangasinan 5 Star Bus Co. Incorporated, City Bus, Star Bus, Earth Star Express Inc., Gel Transport, at Jam Liner, Diamond V8, Pascual Liner, Pamana Transport, Ube Express, DLTB, Genesis, High Star, Thelman Transit, Star 8, Mega World Corporation City Link, Kino, Hyundai, U Hop, and Toyota Motor Philippines, likewise participated in the program. Oil companies also participated in the Libring Sakai for Frontliners project by subsidizing the cost of fuel by participating buses. These include Petron, Phoenix Petroleum, Clean Fuel, Total Philippines, and Sea Oil Philippines. The DOTR does not want to claim full credit for the success of the projects. In almost every forum, the DOTR cites the help provided by other government agencies. These include the Office of the President, Philippine National Police, Armed Forces of the Philippines, LTO, LTFRP, MMDA, Philippine Coast Guard, and the Interagency Council for Traffic. DOTR Road Transport and Infrastructure Assistant Secretary Mark Stephen Pastor said, Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugate wants the Libring Sakai for Frontliners to continue until the COVID-19 pandemic is finally overcome. Until the COVID-19 pandemic is fully under control, the DOTR should continue this program if only to repay the sacrifices and difficulties suffered by health workers and other employees of hospitals and medical centers in the fight against the deadly coronavirus. That's your Motoring Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the...
Extra with the new Mitsubishi Expander Cross. You are back with us here on Motoring Today, and in line with our lifelong commitment to promote road safety, here is this week's road safety tip in cooperation with Toyota Motor Philippines. Kung marami kayong sasakyan na nakahinto sa intersection, keep in mind that the first to stop is the first to go. This way, maiiwasan ang banggaan at iba pang aksidente. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. From Mitsubishi Motors Philippines, here is Payeng Chaper this week. Payong chopper lang kaibigan. Ako po si Harris. Isa po ang kapwa ninyo chopper. Baka din niyo alam, ang paninigarilyo ay matagal nang ipinagbabawal sa mga pampublikong sasakyan. Respeto na lang po sa ating mga pasahero, lalo na sa mga di naninigarilyo na kasakay mo. Kung ang mga pasahero ay di pwedeng manigarilyo, lalo na sigurong bawal manigarilyo ang nagmamaniho. Ang usok na dulot ng sigarilyo ay perwisyo sa taong nakakalanghap nito. Kapag naninigarilyo ang driver, wala ang atensyon niya sa pagmamaneho. Baka di mo namamalayan, wala na din pala sa direksyon ng pagmamaneho. Kaya sundin ang batas na ito para makaiwas, makaperwisyo. Ito po si Harris Morales, payong chopper lang kaibigan. Mula sa isang kapwan niyo chopper. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Let's now take a look at what's happening in the local auto industry. If you chance upon a red MGZS Alpha crossover SUV on the road these days, there could be a Miss Universe behind the wheel. Miss Universe Philippines 2020, Rabia Mateo, has been given the keys to her red MGZS Alpha, a prize that came with winning the title. Miss Mateo, has named her MG Abigail and vows to take it with her as she carries out her duties as Miss Universe Philippines. She says that as Miss Universe Philippines, she expects to travel almost every day and will do so from the comfortable and stylish ZS, adding that she's excited at the prospect of taking extraordinary trips with Abigail to see even more of the country's beautiful attractions. MG Philippines says it will ensure Miss Mateo's MG ownership experience will be as impeccable as her work with her advocacies and performance in representing our country. Like all MG owners, she will have access to all of MG Philippines' 
signature after-sales services, including speedy periodic vehicle maintenance, 24-7 emergency roadside support, responsive customer assistance services, and easy access to MG Service Consultants via online and offline channels. Honda Cars Philippines Incorporated has extended its Feel the Magic this holiday season promos, which offers substantial cash discounts and various other attractive deals and special offerings until the end of the month. These include cash discounts for the City, BRV, Civic, Mobilio, Odyssey, and Civic Type R, and all-in low down payment deals for the Brio, CRV, Jazz, and HRV. Other offerings include a one-year free periodic service for new BRV owners, added benefits for Honda owners upgrading to new vehicles, cash discounts for Honda motorcycle owners buying Honda cars, free Petron fuel cards, free blowpunk air purifiers for buyers of 18YM or 19YM Civic RS Turbo CVT or Mobilio 1.5 RS Navi CVT, and chances to win a Honda Brio in a raffle. Until the end of January, Mercedes-Benz Philippines is offering as much as 600,000 peso discounts on the E200 AMG and 400,000 peso discounts off the V-Class. The E200 AMG comes with exclusive AMG Sporty styling and powertrain and suspension tuned to provide performance driving, best spoke side skirts and 19-inch 5 twin spoke light alloy wheels add to the sporty character. Under the bonnet of the E200 AMG is a 2-liter inline-4 turbo engine mated to a 9G Tronic with direct select lever as well as paddle shifters on the steering wheel. The interior also get the sporty AMG touch, bucket seats in black Artico man-made leather or Dinamica microfiber, D-shaped steering wheel in Napa leather. Mercedes-Benz says the seven-seater V-Class is the perfect vehicle for the family looking for great comfort and luxury. And it comes with Mercedes-Benz's signature assistance and secure technology provide much needed support to the driver in dire driving conditions and situations. SMC Asia Car Distributors Corporation, official distributor of BMW automobiles and motorcycles, said that with the local launch of the R18, BMW Motorrad has entered the cruiser segment. The first ever R18 and its first edition trims stands entirely in the tradition of historical BMW motorcycles, both technically and in design, BMW Motorrad said in a press statement. The R18 borrows from famous models such as the BMW R5, shifting focus back onto the motorcycle essentials, pursuit, no frills technology, and the boxer engine as the epicenter of riding pleasure. The R18 is powered by a 1802cc two-cylinder boxer engine rated at 91 horsepower and 150 Nm of torque. It has three riding modes, rain, roll, and rock so as to adapt to different rider preferences. The BMW Motorrad Philippines' new member is priced at 1,955,000 pesos. It also comes with a BMW 5-year warranty, which covers up to 5 years or 500,000 kilometers, whichever comes first. Today now brings you our Car of the Week on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. In this edition of Showcase, we take a look at one of the variants of the Isuzu UX, the RZ4E LSAT. When Isuzu Philippines Corporation first introduced the mid-size MUX in the Philippines back in September of 2014, it immediately drew good response in terms of sales and repute. Now in 2020, the MUX continues to generate good sales for Isuzu. 
It comes in several variants, trim levels, and prices ranging from 1.35 million pesos to 2.14 million pesos. This car review takes a look at the MUX LS 4x2 Automatic, which comes from the lower price range. The MUX LS RZ4E 4x2 Automatic can be described as a handsome mid-size SUV. A solid, if not intimidating or flashy presence at 4,825mm long, 1,860mm wide, and 1,825mm tall, with 220mm ground clearance and 2,845mm long wheelbase. The thick Levert grille comes in gray, but two-toned front bumper in body color and black. So is the two-toned rear bumper with integrated backup lamps. The side mirrors and door handles are also black. The MUX LS 4x2 automatic exterior also features bi-LED projector headlamps with auto headlamp leveling and integrated daytime running lights, as well as fog lamps and black step board. It also comes with horizontally type rear combination lights with LED positioning lamps. Also adding to a sporty SUV stance are 16-inch aluminum alloy wheels wrapped by 245 by 70 R16 tires. Underneath the hood of the MUX LS 4x2 Automatic is a 1,898cc inline 4-cylinder blue power diesel engine with turbo intercooler that generates 150 PS at 3,600 revolutions per minute and 350 newton meters of torque from 1,800 to 2,600 RPM. The engine sends that power to the rear wheels via six-speed automatic transmission with sequential shift. Controlling the MUX power and speed is a brake system using front and rear ventilated discs. The suspension system features independent double wishbone with coil spring and stabilizer bar in front and 5-link coil spring and stabilizer bar. The MUX sits 7 in 3 rows of seats in a spacious, comfortable cabin. Convenience features in the MUX LS 4x2 Automatic include speed sensing auto power door locks, air conditioning with 2 dial manual control with rear cooler controls, a charging station with 12 volt accessory socket and USB port. The dash features an electroluminescent instrument panel and the infotainment system in the center featuring an 8 inch touchscreen. Safety and security features in the MUX LS 4x2 Automatic include, among other things, dual airbags, ELR seat belts for all seven occupants, child seat tethers on the second row seats anti-lock brake system, electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, brake override system, child-proof rear door locks, and a resin under front skid plate. The MUX doesn't come with all the gigaws and fancy techie stuff of its costlier siblings, but what it does have makes for reliable, comfortable, practical yet fun drive vehicle. SUVs now come in all sizes, trim levels, powertrains, and styles meeting many combination of needs, wants, tastes, and budgets. The Isuzu MUX lineup should be a good place to start when looking for one. That's our featured vehicle on this week's showcase courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program, 100% worry-free driving.
now have our segment that dwells on the wide array of motoring problems, not only in the metro, but all over the country as well. This is where we present problems referred to us or we ourselves see and hope to fully find solutions for. Here's our public service segment brought to you by Honda Cars Philippines. The first month of every year naturally sees carryover issues and problems. This is how we described 2020 back then. Referring to now, it seems like it's how it looks as well. One of the biggest issues of the previous year is the closing of U-turn slots on EDSA to give way to the full implementation of the EDSA busway project. Many motorists have aired their complaints on this move. Local government units, particularly the Quezon City government, have also aired their concerns on the matter. As a result, some U-turn slots on EDSA, located in the said city, have been opened and local authorities man the traffic. Come January of 2021, the MMDA has closed another U-turn slot on EDSA. The original closure date was on the 4th, but was later moved to January 11th. But MMDA traffic authorities have seen the same problem. Closure unknown to motorists and complaints here and there. With the same problems and issues encountered, will there be changes in the planned U-turn slots closure now that we are on a brand new year and the MMDA with a new chairman to lead? That's our public service segment from Honda Cars Philippines. And should you encounter motoring problems that need immediate attention, please feel free to contact us. See the details being flashed on your screen. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week, here on Motor Today, now on its 34th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. Stay healthy and be vigilant at all times. On behalf of my dad, Butch, and my brother, Wee, my name is Susie Gamboa. Happy motoring!